<laughs> wow. My pack unit. Salute. The season opener for the Green Bay Packers just went off the airwaves. And I could not be more proud of the Packers from Green Bay. The Packers just defeated, crushed, laid the smack down on the Bears from Chicago. And we went into Chicago to handle that business. Again, I could not be more proud of this team. The box score for these four quarters, 7-3, to 3-3, to 14-8, and 14-6 to six for a final tally of 38-20 to 20 in favor of of the Green Bay Packers. Man, there's so much to talk about from Jordan Love's performance to Romeo Dobbs, who was questionable even playing in this game. Aaron Jones having one of the best beginnings to a quarter I've ever seen a back have. And then unfortunately, um, tragedy hits Aaron Jones. We're going to find out more about this But we'll talk about that as well. We'll talk about the rookies. We'll talk about our defense, the turnovers. This game had it all. What a wild roller coaster. I'm still trying to comprehend it all. So I'm going to get a big swig of coffee. And we'll come right on back and we will go quarter by quarter on how this game unfolded. But all you need to know from the jump. Deep breath, R-E-L-A-X. The Green Bay Packers are undefeated at 1-0, and we did it against our division rival, the Chicago Bears. We did it in Chicago. We did it decisively. Damn, what a performance. Swig of coffee, come right on back, and we'll absolutely run down this entire game. It's the amplified review of the Green Bay Packers versus the Chicago Bears. Week one, the season has officially kicked off. Let's do this. Let's get amplified. Wow. Um, Like I said in the cold open teaser, I'm still trying to comprehend this game. It just went off the airwaves. I would have liked a little bit more time before we start recording, but this is the only time I can cut this podcast for you guys. So I'm still trying to comprehend. I cannot be more proud of this team, just like I said in the cold open. This team, you guys have to remember, this team did something tonight that veteran teams don't usually do, especially not in week one, not this early in the season. This team put together a complete game 
whether it was offense, defense, or even special teams, they put together a complete game. And that's something that even with Aaron Rodgers, we have not seen in a long time. Tonight, we saw a special team. Carlson with a 50-plus yard field goal that was right down the middle, flawless. Defense with the sacks that were so massive, absolutely ruined any chance the Bears had of a comeback. One big-time sack after the other. A fumble recovery. The interception that was taken to the house by Walker. Defense didn't just hold their own. They absolutely stood up and stood out. Offense, Jordan Love, 225-plus yards, 127-point semi passer rating, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, Jones with a couple of touchdowns, Romeo Dobbs with a couple of touchdowns. This dude wasn't even guaranteed to play just 48 hours ago, and he's got a couple of touchdowns. Offense, defense, special teams, The play calling from Matt LaFleur. It didn't matter. Everything checked off tonight. It was a complete game. Now, that doesn't mean that every area doesn't need to be tightened up even more. Of course. Receiving routes, they need to be tightened up. There were some overthrown balls. Jordan Love needs to tighten that up. Uh, Penalties. Still an Achilles heel for the Green Bay Packers, as it has been for years. (laughs) We have not shaken off the penalty bug. That needs to be tightened up. That starts with Coach LaFleur, and it trickles down to the players. So, of course, every area can be tightened up more, but this is the most complete game we've seen from this team in years, many seasons. This team did that. This team did what many teams do not do in week one, not this early in the season. This team tonight laid down the footprints, the pathway to an actual identity. Week one, this team is already laying down the footprints to an identity. It usually takes weeks for a team. You can collect two, three, four victories in a row. That doesn't mean you have an identity yet. This team is showing you they're not here to be a layup in the league this year, this season. They're not here to be a layup. They're not here for a rebuilding year. They're not here to be overlooked They're not here just to try to give it the old college try in the attaboy. They're here to take the North and to be a viable threat like they always are to the entire conference and the league as a whole. This was a badass victory by the Packers from Green Bay. Can you tell I'm proud of this team, man? I think there's only one way to really do this the right way. Let's just break down these quarters, man. We'll break down these quarters. We'll tell you the scoring drives. We'll give you the injury report or the injuries during the game anyway. Again, we have to record this podcast right after the game. So I don't have the full injury report. And uh, I'm not privy to what is being said in the press conferences. But um, I can at least tell you what we saw when this game was live. We'll go over it. We'll go over the turnovers, special teams, everything that was of any value or importance I have noted, and we're going to discuss right now, guys. So let's get right into it. Um, We'll start, obviously, from the jump, quarter one. Let me get a swig of coffee, and we'll rock this out. All right, so we'll start first half, first quarter. Bears, first drive for Chicago. Fourth and one, near their own 40, and a massive stop by the Packinators. And when I say massive... Guys, Fields, he just needs one yard. He leaps like he's Michael Jordan. The one problem with all of this is he's not Michael Jordan. Thus, he is stuffed by Green Bay's big D line. And they rocked it, man. So proud of them. How many times have we seen in years past this same scenario where they're in a minor situation or a bigger situation, and we just don't get the job done. Here we are, the first true test for this defense of the season. Wham! Out of the ballpark. So good to see that stop, man, for many reasons. You talk about setting the tone for the season for the defense. Man, does that do the trick. Now the Packers' first drive. Aaron Jones trips. Loses about a yard, maybe two. So right from the jump, you wait seven months before you you take a snap. 
in a regular season game anyway. Seven months, no football. And the first play, it, it, it gives you flashbacks to last year. Not as bad, but Rodgers to Watson. Watson drops the ball and it just sets the tone for the rest of the year. I'm not saying this was that bad. I'm not saying this was a, a, a tone setter. But damn, you want that first play to be explosive, you know, set the tone. And poor Aaron Jones just trips. I don't think he had much, even if he didn't. Second play is a run option that loses two more yards. (laughs) No joke, man. First two plays, they're wishing they had them both back. Um, And then we call, now this is no joke, man. This is our first drive of the season. And we call a timeout four minutes into this game. Four minutes into the game. Does that sound familiar? And we call this timeout because we haven't a clue what we're doing. This is old school Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers used to do this relentlessly to the most nauseating of degrees and measurements. Aaron Rodgers did this. He would use all of our timeouts nonchalantly, meaninglessly, carelessly, recklessly. He would just call timeouts, didn't see what he liked. He wasn't ready yet. He wants everybody to relax. He wants to to have a sip of coffee. Who knows what he wants to do, but he just uses our timeouts like like they're expendable. When they're not, you got to treat them like gold. Timeouts will help you win games if you use them correctly and you save them. Use timeouts like currency. Don't just recklessly use up your currency or credit. Save that for when you need it. Don't swipe your credit card for every purchase. You might need something down the road. Actually need something. Well, in these football games, you're going to need those timeouts. Aaron Rodgers, I cannot tell you how many times he would just call these timeouts. And I'm like, well, at some point, I don't care if it's Coach Holmgren who didn't do Rodgers. He was Brett Favre. But you get the point. It could be Holmgren. It could be Mike McCarthy. It could be LaFleur. You could put in Bill Parcells or Bill Belichick. Somebody has to finally tell this quarterback, you can't be using the timeouts like this. Here we are four minutes into the game. First drive, third down. And Jordan Love just calls a timeout because we don't got we don't got our act together. We don't know what we're doing. You can't do that. I can't stress that enough. Anyway, we go into the third down. It's third and 13. Jordan to Romeo Dobbs for 14. We needed 13. Dobbs gives us 14. Great throw by, well, not great, really good throw by Jordan Love. Dobbs is exactly where he needs to be. Now, of course, Romeo was questionable. We already had Watson out. Romeo was about to be out with a hamstring injury of his own. He was already out before Watson with a hamstring injury. Watson comes down with a soft tissue hamstring injury. He's already ruled out days before this matchup. And then we find out Romeo will be playing. That was huge just to have him in the game. Even if they don't throw to him, he's a threat. He'll take up some of that defense. But to have him in these positions and catching these balls to get these first downs, that was massive. A big third down for Green Bay early on. Later in this same drive, third and goal. We made it all the way to the goal position. This is where the Packers are iffy. 50-50. But Love is able to hit Romeo Dobbs for a huge touchdown pass. And the best part about this touchdown, guys, if you go back and you watch it, if you ever have time, is how right before Love releases the pass, he completely calms himself down and he delivers one of those Rodgers R-E-L-A-X passes, right? Or Rodgers just, you see it. You don't even need slow motion. Right before he's about to release, Rodgers will just, you'll see his shoulders dump down. It's like he just releases 17 years of stress <laughs> right before he throws this pass. Love did that right before he releases this ball. He's looking, he's looking, he's all stressed. The defense is coming at him. And right before he knows his target and where he's going to release that ball, you just see him just absolutely stop. Like time, the world, everything stopped for him. 
and he lowers the shoulders, the stress is gone, and he just flicks this thing. Or at least it looks like he flicks it. Now this was in the back of the end zone. They were already at the 8-yard line, so you're looking around 15 yards-ish. But it looked like it was a 3-yard flick. That's how just nonchalant it was. But it's skill. And that was the first sign of many in the first half, that this Jordan Love kid, man, did he get leaps and bounds better than when we last saw him. So this wasn't just a regular touchdown pass. Hey, that's good. Good start. No, this was more telling. This gave us a lot more glimpses of the potential that is in Jordan Love. The potential that Romeo can have. Our O-line. Everybody looked good on this first drive. Again, minus some of those little mistakes like timeouts (laughs) on your first drive of the season the third play of the game and you're already using timeouts you can't do it and Aaron Jones tripping and then the 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 flick run where we lost two more yards there was some growing pains but it ended up with a TD now with three minutes left in the first quarter uh Javier Alexander knocks Fields out of bounds now the Bears think it was a cheap hit but Fields was clearly in bounds when Alexander hit him so it's no harm, no foul. There's no no cheapery done. This was all very much legal in game. And the Bears didn't want to hear it. They thought it was cheap because there's this supposed this well, it is, but there's this rivalry, so it's a cheap shot. So then both clubs just start brawling in the rivalry, whether you believed in it or not, or you thought it was passe, it's done. There is no more rivalry anymore. Whichever side of the fence you're on. The rivalry was alive. It was alive because they were just brawling, man. In fact, there's people getting shoved out even when the referees broke everybody up. There was two personal fouls on each each club. So obviously that's going to offset. But the original personal foul was on us. So that would have given the Bears uh, nearly a first and goal, if not uh, set them up pretty good for a touchdown. But instead... Um, one of our players, I forgot exactly who they got shoved afterwards, right to the, right to the field. And the referee was right in front of two referees. So there was no, I mean, that was a flag. It offset bears were stuck settling for a field goal. Um, Chicago gets on the board. And at this point it's seven to three, the Packers would end quarter one with an atrocious three and out. Just beyond bad is what I consider atrocious. Uh, First down, Love throws behind his intended receiver by a full yard. Second down, Love flicks the ball to Dylan, but the Bears reached Dylan before the ball reached Dylan. So do the math. (laughs) Love gets the ball. He goes a couple yards to his left. He flicks it to Dylan, who's about two yards further to his left. So we're just running east and west at this point. In fact, west. Nobody has gone north yet. And as Love and Dylan are going this way, the entire bear line is already at Dylan. That didn't go over so well. So then we go to third down, and it was a seven-yard connection. So a completed pass, but seven yards. You need ten, so we fell three short. And that forced a punt to end Q1. But it's all about in the game of football, as in most sports, it's all about who has the most points at the end of a game or a quarter or the end of a phase or stage. Well, this is one of the first of four stages. Quarter one, Packers have more points on the board. Packers win quarter one, seven to three, as we go into Q2. Quarter two, can we keep the momentum going? We start off with a solid red zone stop by the pack. Rasul Douglas prevents a bullet throw into the end zone, and he was playing some good, straight up, hand for hand battle coverage. Uh, I mean, you could have called a penalty on either one of these dudes. Easily, you could have said it was defensive, but ref let him play. And at the very last second, Rasul Douglas just puts up that left arm. I thought it hit him in the head. It was so loud right into the helmet. But it was right into the arm. Knocks that down. Rasul says, no, not in this house. So 
The Da Bears once again settle for a short field goal to start quarter two. So at this point, 7-6, Packers are holding their own, man. Now the Packers give it right back to Chicago on a week, and I mean week three and out. There was a third and four. Not only was Love late on the throw, but rookie Jaden Reed let the ball literally go through his hands and bounce off of his chest. It was just, it was one of those rough things to witness as we just punt it right back to Chicago. So we start quarter two just kind of volleying with one another. We then go into a, a, a defense that said, basically, hold my beer or coffee or whatever beverage you're consuming, hold it. We got you, offense. And the defense absolutely blocked. Chicago and force their own three and out. So the ball went right back to Green Bay. At this point, we're literally volleying to start quarter two. There was a big moment at the end of Q2. There was a fourth and one near the Bears 40 for the Packers. So picture it, all right? Packers have got a little bit of momentum. It's, it's, uh, we're, we're near their 40. So we were, man, one more first down. And it's not just about field goal range, but that momentum is really going to pick up. And we're about four yards away from it. And the Packers decide to go for it. Now, I love this call, right? No harm, no foul. It's the same as if you were to punt it or do a kickoff and they reach their own 30. And then they just get one first down and they're already at the 40 anyway. So you're almost at the 40. Just picture it like you took a huge gamble. If it fails, they're only around. They're just past their 40. And with the type of momentum that they were rocking with at the time, I just felt this was the right time to do a big gamble like this. But instead, Love and LaFleur tapped into their Rodgers playbook, and they just uh, they try catching Chicago offsides with a hard count. I call that the Rodgers Supreme, right? The Rodgers Special. <laughs> How many times have we seen Rodgers just go up at fourth down and just try to do that hard count, man? And he would get, I would say about, I would say about 25, 30% of the time, this dude would actually catch somebody offsides and with an approachment or something of the like. So they tried it. I don't mind this at all. I would have went for it. But at least try this, man. Just because you ain't got Rodgers don't mean you can't take some of that from his playbook. It's not like he invented it. He just made a damn special with how good he was at it. But this fails. He's not Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> this fails and we end up punting. Eh. Again, BC would have absolutely took this gamble. No harm, no foul. If you didn't get it, they get it just past their 40. Put up some defense. They'd have to get at least three first downs to have a a field goal that you feel good about at least or at least if they hit the field goal you don't feel that bad you made them work for it it'd be over 40 yards so it was a good punt though that's the light at the end of the day if i can give you any positivity in this even though the hard count failed it was a really good punt man it put chicago it pinned them at their three yard line pretty damn solid now, the Packers' final possession of the half, a huge 35-yard missed opportunity from Love. Now, he had a couple of these. This was the second, and he had a man wide open, and it's a beautiful throw. He absolutely overthrows it. You could easily say the receiver didn't exactly um, barrel toward where Love thought he was going to be, but it still, I believe, would have been overthrown a good four to five yards. But even though he overthrew it, even though it was a failed uh, attempt, what a throw on this kid. If anything, it showed us this kid has the it factor. Jordan Love is the real deal. Something that Brett Favre had and Aaron Rodgers did even better was when they throw that deep ball, how it's a thing of beauty. It's like everything else in the world just stops or goes into slow motion. And like I said in the preview podcast, it's just like you hear that song, dun, 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 and everything's slow motion, and the ball is slowly turning. Jordan Love has a beautiful bomb throw, and this was only 35. I think he did another one earlier that was near 40 yards, but a beautiful throw. Now we work on accuracy, <laughs> a little thing called accuracy. Let's do that. Um... 
But then we go to uh, third down because of that missed uh, completion. Missed opportunity. We go to third down. Love hits rookie Jaden Reed for a huge new set of downs. Jaden Reed, who again earlier in Q1, let that ball bounce off of his chest. Actually, that was earlier in Q2. So that was the drive before. Um, Yeah, the drive before. He just let it go through his hands, bounce off his chest. This was immediate redemption for Jaden Reed, now that I think about it. Because he had a big third down completion, man. Um, Turns a new set of downs. um, But then a massive sack from the Bears. Doesn't just crush Jordan Love, but it crushes any chance that the Green Bay Packers had for scoring a touchdown going into the half. I mean, that sack was massive. It wasn't just the 10 yards that he lost. It was the momentum that we lost. And then we ended up settling for a 50-plus yard field goal by Carlson. And he nails it, by the way. This was a long kick, and it was flawless. I mean, that's one way to get the fans to move on from Mason Crosby, uh, Crosby, as much as he was loved. Um, by many fans, BC alike, uh, toward the last couple of years, there was these moments, several games. You guys remember, was it just a couple of years ago? There was like many games in a row where Mason Crosby was checked out, missing everything. I, I mean, you could, you could take each side of those goalposts and you could put them, you could put one goalpost in, in New York City, you could put the other one in San Diego, California, and he would still miss the field goal. There was moments where Crosby was just checked out, man. He had to get in the right headspace, get back into it. Last year, I felt he found his groove again. But still, there was a lot of question marks over the last couple of years. So Carlson, this was his big calling card to the world of National Football League, especially the Green Bay Packer fans. And he nailed it. Uh, That was the end of the half. So this is uh, 10 to 6 is your score going into the third quarter, going into the second half. Two field goals, by, field goals by Chicago, no touchdowns. One touchdown, one field goal by Green Bay. Green Bay wins Q1, 7-3. Green Bay wins Q2, 10-6. And then we go into the third quarter. Oh man, the third quarter, the Packers just came out barreling barreling man they had their coffees five hour energies wheaties spinach you name it they had it they took it jordan love connects with aaron jones from our own 42 on a 51 yard gain into the red zone that's our back aaron jones and then jones takes it to the house he completes his own mission (laughs) he takes it on a one yard carry and afterwards so he set it up and then he took it to the house finished his own equation and i told you guys in the preview to this matchup packers versus bears we put it up early this morning right here on the channel the preview to this game and i told you guys that one of the biggest pieces to the puzzle of the Green Bay Packers 2023 season. One of the biggest pieces that you need to utilize was Aaron Jones. Are you going to utilize him to the best of his abilities and the most of his capabilities? And that means expanding his role and allowing him more receptions. If you do that, you're going to watch the yards after catch pile up and you're going to watch a touchdown explosion unfold. Because this guy, especially with all the question marks with your young wide receivers, the biggest question mark in your quarterback and all the injuries currently already, why not utilize Aaron Jones the best way possible? He's so versatile. Use him that way. So I thought coming out of the third quarter and utilizing Jones the way they did, this was a masterpiece, a straight clinic by Matt LaFleur and love and Jones just put the exclamation points on the on that masterpiece from head coach LaFleur. Everybody utilized their own roles beautifully. I, I could not be more proud of this team coming out of the third quarter. And that was just the tip of the ice. That was just literally the beginning of it all. Because there was a big stop from our D that would give us the ball right back. Literally three and out, we get the ball right back. And the Packers made sure that this was a gift That did not go unappreciated because immediately when we got the ball back, 
Love hits Jones again, this time for a 35-yard catch and run straight into the end zone. So the drive before, he set it up with a 51-yard completion and catches after, or yards after catch, and then he ran it in for the last yard. This one, he said, no, I'm not going to need another try. I'm catching this, and I'm going to tear it up. I'm taking it to the house. Aaron Jones absolutely took control of the top of the third quarter. And, and, and then and then tragedy, right? Aaron Jones looked to had, have... Uh, a hammy get pulled or something with the leg. We think it's a hamstring. He was stretching it out on the sidelines and was instantly questionable for the remainder of the game. And then they just obviously kept him out. But it looked to uh, be a pulled hammy on the scoring touchdown. Um, a catastrophic issue already that is ravaging the Green Bay Packers, man. Watson is out because of a hammy. Romeo Dobbs almost missed this game because of a hammy. Four rookies are currently out with hamstring injuries. And it looks like we just lost uh, Aaron Jones because of it. Now, we're going to find out more if it was exactly the hammy, which it looked like it was. But uh, we're recording this podcast immediately after the game. So we'll find out more, man. But I hope I hope it's not one of those things that takes him out for weeks. Because, man, when I say he is a pivotal part of of this puzzle, he is the missing link piece. And without him, you take him out, it's even more catastrophic than losing Watson, I assure you. So just when Aaron Jones is taking over the game, snap of a finger, blink of an eye, drop of a hat, he's out of the game. Um, But it was two straight TDs from the jump of the third quarter, man. And in the first... Uh, nine minutes of this half. Um, the, the Packers are absolutely just taking control of the game. The Bears' nosedive would collapse even deeper on the ensuing drive as Fields fumbles the ball right into the hands of the Green Bay Packers. We'll take the, these were the gifts that kept on giving by the Bears, man. A fumble that went right into our hands. Again, Rasul Douglas was at the center of this turnover. So Douglas was having a hell of a game. And uh, this ball just fell into our arms. So we're like, all right, let's do it again. Another TD. Why stop at two? Um, Unfortunately, this time we did not show appreciation for this gift. And following a personal foul after the fumble, which was just stupid, uh, that took us 15 yards in the opposite direction. And uh, a three and out is all we had to to show for it. It's all we could muster, a three and out. <laughs> so unfortunately, we couldn't do anything with this fumble. And that would actually prove to be detrimental because at the end of Q3, uh, Justin Fields would connect with a quick TD pass, um, which our defense just collapsed on, by the way. Nixon, Nixon just let his man just run right by him. <laughs> he was like... This dude's going into the end zone, and Nixon has his mind already on what's for dinner, man. He's over at, uh, oh no, maybe he's at Dunkin' Donuts, maybe he just wants a coffee. Or maybe he is at the local McDonald's. Is the McRib back yet? Maybe he's at the Ponderosa. He's in a buffet mood. I don't know, but this dude is anywhere else but covering his dude. And he just runs right by him, and then he realizes after he's already five steps behind him, oh, I might have to cover him. And of course, Nixon cannot catch up. And that was an easy, breezy, lemon squeezy touchdown. That was a uh, that was a hard one to watch. Um, and then, and, and, and by the way, um, and, and that was an easy sit. When I say easy six, uh, I mean simplistic. Um, Chicago goes for two after that, not the field goal. So they go for two, and that <laughs> it was we let them just take a stroll in the park. At that point, the whole defense was just like, well, I'm. do they have the McRib back? Because we're all in. <laughs> we'll take the McRib. We'll go to the buffet. I think we're, we're done with this game. They just let this dude waltz right in. I, it's, it's not over at that point. Don't just let him just walk in to the end zone for a two-point conversion. That two points could end up coming back and haunting this team. That was rough to watch, you know, it, it could be because it could easily have been avoidable. 
The the touchdown could have been avoidable, and it should have been. Uh, Nixon has to tighten up in that situation. And then the the two the, the two point conversion that can never happen that easy, guys. It can't right up the middle. That was rough. That was really rough. And that was the end of Q3 24-14. And when I say rough, man, that, that's that's eight points. That's an eight point swing. We could have gotten out of that quarter 24 to 6. 24 to 6. And instead, because we just let them waltz right by us, you're looking at 24-14. You don't want to give a team, any team in the National Football League, you don't want to give them hope. 24 to 6 in the way that we were beating their ass. That's pretty decisive. I mean, they're going to come into the fourth quarter pretty beaten down. But after that eight-point swing, now they're coming into the fourth quarter, you would think anyway, um, thinking that they truly have a chance. Now, that wasn't the case. Wait till you hear this, man. Let me flip it over to the quarter four here in my notes because this is... I don't even think I need the notes. This was just... <laughs> this is just the, the notes for quarter four should just say... Packers put the ass whooping on the Bears because that's what happened. In Q4, the Packers said, enough, we're taking the North. That's what they said. We're taking the North. Love hits a near 40-yard bomb off of a fumble, by the way. He drops the ball off of the hike, and he's bobbling it, and he just drops back, stays composed, and lobs this thing. It looks like a lob anyway. It's a thing of beauty. 40 yards down the field and connects. And then hits Romeo Dobbs for another touchdown a couple plays later. So Jones, or Love, to Romeo. Another touchdown for, for Romeo and Jordan Love is looking spectacular at this point. Um, three touchdowns over 225 in yardage, zero interceptions, a 127 point semod passer rating. I mean, off the charts. And then we weren't done. Quay Walker, number seven. Uh, we know the problems that Walker had at the end of last season. You remember the penalty. You remember him in tears pretty much going um, into the tunnel. It was a rough end to the season for Walker and, and not smart decisions by this kid. But this was number seven at his best, man. Intercepts Justin Fields on the ensuing drive and takes it to the house. A literal tank engine during this run back. Um, the Bears were giving this SOB their best shots, and Quay was saying, sit up, down. Sit down. He was sitting Bears down as they tried to hit him and tackle this dude. Quay was just not, he was not taking it. No, I'm not going down. And he gets his ass right into the end zone, man. I, I, I'm telling you guys, man, this was so, this was a legit badass touchdown i know we overuse the term and the word badass this was a badass interception near the 50 yard line and a complete tank engine run back at the very end when he got into the end zone he took a stiff hit because he felt he was already in the end zone so he kind of let up just a foot you know just a little bit he let up and you can't do that in the nfl and he got wabaka i don't believe walker came back after that guys this was in the fourth quarter i know for a fact they took him to the tunnel and he was being evaluated so yet another injury so many green bay packers went down in this game to the best of my knowledge uh, David Bakhtiari did not get injured. In the first drive, he laid down a little bit extra in timing, and I was like, oh, no, we just lost, we just lost Bakhtiari again. <laughs> but thankfully, he's still, he was in the game, that, the best of my knowledge, the whole game, and he was protecting Jordan Love uh, like nobody else in this league. I mean, David Bakhtiari, now I know why he's Aaron Rodgers' right-hand man. Aaron Rodgers would have loved to have had him in New York. But uh, so many injuries for the Packers. Again, we are recording this podcast immediately after the game. So it's going to be interesting to see the injury report. Hopefully we didn't lose a lot of these guys for a lengthy amount of time because this will be detrimental. Uh, but uh, number seven, Quay Walker, puts an exclamation point on this game with an incredible 
incredible badass interception on Fields and run back for the TD. So Fields just had a rough day. Fields did not look like himself. Um, had trouble uh, getting his own feet underneath him and getting some good runs. Um, a fumble that went right to the Green Bay Packers, an interception, clearly, going to the Packers, and and some vicious, vicious sacks Justin Fields took. So Jordan Love uh, completely took this round with Justin Fields. The Green Bay Packers completely took uh, control of this game in many different facets. The, the score, the final score was 38 to... 14 or did they score get the 38 20 i believe but trust me when i say that this was a was it 13 38 14 no i think it was 38 20 right and then they they scored and then they missed a two-point conversion i believe i don't know it'll be up in the thumbnail um but this was a, a lot more of an ass whooping than the score will tell you like you'll see just a couple of touchdown difference a little more it was more than that man i mean this was an absolute beating it felt like this felt like a crushing this was the packers from green bay putting the smackdown on the bears from chicago uh this was an absolute ass whooping it shows you that they don't need Aaron Rodgers to completely own Chicago Bears still because it's clear the Packers still own the Chicago Bears. And now it might be even more diabolical. Now it's even more of a whooping. Now it's even more of an owning. I, I mean, they looked better than the last couple of times I've seen Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take on the Bears. This Packers team looked that much better. Or was it the Bears were that much worse? Was it a mixture of the two? I told you guys in the preview to this um, to this game earlier this morning when we put up that podcast. I told you guys that the Bears last year were 29th in defense. And they allow almost 400 yards a game. So I was telling you guys, if they haven't drastically changed that, there's a way that we could run our way with this game. And we don't have to do anything extra special. Well, our defense showed up and we ended up doing some extra special uh, extra special uh, things in this game. And you put a complete game together like that, and I, I don't think the Bears are this bad. I think we just made them look that way. I think we are that good. We've been hearing the rumblings in the preseason. I think we're starting to see. This is just the beginning, guys. Uh, you got to believe they don't even have their feet underneath them yet. You got to believe they have not found their groove or anywhere near their groove. You got to believe they're still trying to feel one another out and learn one another and each other's game. You got to believe that this, this is only going to be uh, bigger and better as we go on through the season. But injuries, that's the big thing. You know, if you collect one injury after another and one star player after another is dropping out, it starts with a Watson, goes to a Jones, maybe a Quay Walker, then David Bakhtiari in two weeks is out. It's a ripple effect and you start losing these pieces of the puzzle. And guess what? You're not going to be able to complete the puzzle if you don't have the right pieces. So it's it's about health right now. And I saw this. Um, you know, I saw this with the Yankees from New York. They have so many soft tissue injuries. You got to start looking at your medical staff. You got to be looking at their car, their conditioning. What are they doing that is screwing up so many hamstrings? You can't be dropping like flies this early. And that's what the Packers are doing. But uh, at this point, you'll take this W, you'll run far away, you won't look back like you just robbed the bank. You're taking this W in Chicago, and we're going to move on, man. And that's exactly what we are going to do. I think, what, what's it, Atlanta next week, is it? I don't know. Um, another national TV game, though. So even without Rodgers, man, they're putting the mic, they're putting the national microscope right on top of Jordan Love. Screw up, kid. Screw up. You're going to do it on national TV. And so far, Jordan Love says, nah, not happening. Guys, uh, what a, a week one season opener. Um, national TV on Fox. It was their game of the week. And the Green Bay Packers put the whooping, the crushing, the smackdown on the Bears. One week in the books, the Packers are undefeated. One and zero. Aaron who? 
No, I'm playing. I'm playing, man. Much respect to Rodgers. We'll see what he does tomorrow night on Monday Night Football. Should be interesting. That's it, man. What a game. Uh, Packers, my pack unit. Salute. We did it, man. We went into Chicago with so many question marks. We came out with exclamation points. Until next time, and there will be a next time, BC will be right back with you on this channel next week for the preview to next week's game and, of course, the review. And we'll do it all throughout the season. It's a, uh, It's going to be a wild one. If it's anything like this, it's going to be fun, though. Till next time, and there will be that next time. Top guy, I'm out. BC saying check you to my pack unit. Peace.